Paris is on high alert as anti-government protesters take to the streets. For the fourth consecutive weekend, police fired tear gas and arrested more than 700 people this morning. Around 89,000 security forces have been deployed around France and tourist attractions and shops in the capital have been forced to close. Copycat protests have been rumored in Belgium as well. Paris, police fired tear gas and arrested more than 200 people this morning as so-called anti-government yellow vest protesters took to the streets for a fourth consecutive weekend. The city is on high alert following the violence that broke out last weekend, forcing the closing of the Eiffel Tower, shops and museums. Copycat protests are reported in Belgium. Well, we watched throughout this morning as this crowd of maybe 200 people has now swollen to several thousand stretching down the length of the Champs-Élysées all the way up to the Arc de Triomphe. Every now and then, a group of rowdy demonstrators will try to burst out into the side streets and avenues, and they're met with a wall of riot police. When that happens, we've heard it ourselves, the riot police have been firing back with stun grenades and tear gas in order to disperse the crowd. Even so, this is relatively tame and contained to what they had here last week, where demonstrations descended into chaos and destruction. 400 people were arrested. In order to avoid that, they pumped up the number of security personnel to 89,000 in order to try to contain these crowds, not just here in Paris, but elsewhere throughout the country. Parts of Paris have become a battle zone after violent street protests. French President Emmanuel Macron has ordered his prime minister to begin holding talks with the demonstrators and has not ruled out declaring a state of emergency. Protesters torched cars, vandalized buildings and clashed with police this weekend in the worst riots to hit France's capital in over a decade. Even tear gas and water cannons struggled to disperse the angry crowd. More than 400 people were arrested and 133 people, including 23 police officers, injured. Parts of Paris this morning looked like a war zone. President Emmanuel Macron toured the damage, including this graffiti on the Arc de Triomphe, calling on him to resign. The so-called yellow vest protests, named after the safety vests worn by demonstrators, began three weeks ago. They were fueled by an increase in gasoline tax, but have grown into a fierce fight against declining living standards. This morning, France's government says that it will suspend a controversial fuel tax that triggered weeks of violent protests. The so-called yellow vest protests led to running battles between police and demonstrators in Paris over the weekend. The safety vest used by broken down drivers symbolize the cost of fuel taxes. Protesters are upset about rising prices and a declining standard of living. The three month suspension is a surprise U-turn by a government trying to ease tensions, but it may not end blockades and demonstrations with protesters vowing to keep fighting. A long way from the Champs-Élysées, these Gilets Jaunes protesters remain mobilized. They've taken over this motorway toll booth and are offering drivers free passage. The wealth gap is getting wider, and we've reached a point where there are the very rich and the very poor and more and more people are slipping into poverty. Now we're going into a terrible time of year because we can't afford Christmas presents for our kids. I'm 51 and it's like we're going back to the time when my dad gave us an orange and some cheese for Christmas. That's what we're back to. It's terrible. People here say their purchasing power has nosedived and there's resentment over the president's abolition of a tax on the wealthy. In an area where people depend on their vehicles, the planned fuel tax rise was a step too far. That was the final straw. We were already drowning in taxes, and with that, we just wouldn't be able to cope anymore. Then the government agreed to freeze the tax, but that was just an attempt to shut us up. Of course we should pay tax, but it's too much, it's over the top. They get rid of the tax on the rich and then make us pay. Something's not right. 
Why did they get rid of the tax on the wealthy? Touted as France's hope when he was elected last year, he came into office with an approval rating of more than 60%. But he's gone from Jupiter to Jeers, with the latest polls showing his popularity has crashed. Labor will be freed, companies will be supported, initiative will be encouraged. I will humbly serve our people. French men and French women who feel forgotten will be better protected. Gilets jaunes, or yellow vests, refers to the neon vests that all French drivers must keep in their vehicles for breakdown emergencies. But now, it's come to symbolize a protest movement, frustrated with French President Emmanuel Macron, who they say is disconnected from the day-to-day -day economic difficulties suffered by workers and retirees. The gilets jaunes represent the most serious threat yet to Macron's agenda and his presidency. The movement started off in response to Macron's proposal to raise the fuel tax, but now its target is much broader. Protesters are seeking to reverse Macron's repeal of much of the wealth tax, and many want the president to resign. In late November and early December, thousands took to the street of France in multiple protests. Hundreds injured, hundreds arrested, dozens of vehicles torched, and several shops looted. The famous Arc de Triomphe defaced. The violence is something that uh, we've rarely seen to this level. You'd have to go back to 68, I think, to see the same or similar kinds of scenes of these street blockades, the burning cars, uh, the uh, paving stones being thrown at the police, the police using tear gas with abandon. It's a situation that is a really very tense. Jim Bitterman has reported from the French capital for almost 40 years. It is a very, at least potentially dangerous situation as the movement spreads and as there increasingly is a, a vagueness about what it is exactly that could bring it to an end. The protesters, who call themselves gilets jaunes, or yellow vests, are part of a grassroots set of eco-taxes that were set to come into effect in January. You have to have a yellow vest that's required by law in your car. Every motorist has to have one of these in his car. So anybody can join this movement without any kind of thought. From there, the unrest turned into a broader demonstration against French President Emmanuel Macron and his policies. Once you get an uprising that's spread uh, across the country the way this one has and kind of captured the imagination of uh, people who might not have even thought about protesting the fact that the cost of living is so high or that the pensions haven't gone up, where you get people saying, well, that affects me too, and maybe I should get out there. The unrest also spread to hundreds of high schools across France, where students have been demonstrating against the government's recent education reforms. The streets of Paris, including the iconic Champs-Élysées, have been filled with cars on fire, police in riot gear, and tear gas this weekend. The Yellow Vest protests started as a grassroots protest against fuel taxes, but this has now become a nationwide movement against the Macron administration. And all across the country, 135 people were wounded, almost 1,000 were taken into custody, tens of thousands of police were deployed, and all major tourist attractions are closed. Four deaths have been attributed to these protests, including an 80-year-old woman who was hit in the face by a tear gas canister flying through her window. Thank you.